Math 151, we're going to take a peek at 4.6, limits at infinity and asymptotes. And so let's get it a little notation. Uh, the limit as x approaches infinity of f of, f of x equals some l. Or, or the limit as x approaches negative infinity. You know, uh, think about what this means. As x approaches infinity, it just means we're going to the right as far as we can. x is growing without bound in a positive direction. And the limit as x approaches negative infinity, it's going towards the left. Um, so let's think about something like uh, cosine of x over x plus 1. So uh, I'm going to analyze this one using a graph. So I'll pull up Desmos. Cosine of x divided by x plus 1. And if I look at this one... Make these steps by one. It looks like as this gets bigger and bigger, right, as x grows without bound, looks like this thing starts to kind of dance around one. And it looks like it's getting closer and closer. So I could just say a visual inspection of the graph. Um, it looks like this is approaching one. Now, one of the things that uh, I want to point out is sometimes it is one right like it's one it gets a little further away from one but then it comes back to one and it starts oscillating closer and closer to one so that limit is is one so if i say the limit as x approaches infinity of that function is one i could also say it has an asymptote the graph of it has an asymptote at y equals one now um one kind of misconception that's pretty common with asymptotes is people think that um, it can't touch an asymptote. It can. It can repeatedly touch the asymptote. The thing that the asymptote describes is long-term behavior. As x gets really big, this thing is starting to settle down to 1. You can barely even like zoom in a lot to get that little... But it's still, a, it's still an asymptote, even though it touches it and kind of dances, dances around it. So the limit as x approaches infinity of, of this, of 5 minus uh, 3 over x squared. Let's just do a graph inspection on this one, too. Well, it sure looks like 5, <laughs> right? As x gets it's towards infinity 5, it looks like there's an asymptote there. Um, and if I were to run it in the negative direction, too, it's also 5. And so far, we're also say the limit as x approaches negative infinity ah, of that function, it's also 5. Because this has an asymptote at y equals 5. How about if I had sine x over x? This asymptote, I'm going to say as x approaches infinity, just visually, it sure looks like it starts to settle down to zero. So that would have an asymptote at zero. Or how about inverse tangent of x? Well, according to this graph, it looks like as x is getting bigger, this thing is getting closer and closer to a 1.55 maybe? like. Right? Like we could just go out and, and see what it does. So those are those are visual inspections of graphs to figure them out. I want to go back and talk about this one a little bit more. Because if I get let x get really, really large, I have this 5 minus 3 over x squared. I'm going to do a little hand waving. Limit as x approaches infinity is that. I'm letting x get big. So I have 3 over a really big number squared. This goes to zero, right? Like three over a hundred, or three over uh, ten thousand, or three over ten to the eighteenth. Like this is so close to zero. This term is getting closer and closer to zero. So this thing must settle down to five. So as you know, some functions uh, don't have asymptotes. 
um, a lot of functions don't have asymptotes. So if I think about this, the limit as x approaches infinity of x cubed. Well, I know that x cubed looks like this, where there's 0, 0. So as x is getting bigger, y is growing without bound. So um, we in in the past, we've kind of said does not exist, but we can say it approaches infinity. It's another way of saying it grows without bound, right? Because it's getting bigger and bigger positive direction. And if I say go in the negative direction, the limit as x approaches negative infinity, as x grows in the negative direction without bound, this is going to go down forever. So this is going to grow without bound in a negative direction. That'll head towards negative infinity. But notice, like, if I asked that same question, but it was x to the fourth power instead of uh, third power. x to the fourth looks like this. These actually both still, the, both these extremes, these, this end behavior of this function, which we talked about in pre-calc, uh, this end behavior grows without bound, but these both go in a positive direction. So this goes towards infinity, and this goes also goes towards infinity. And one thing you might remember from um, from pre-calc, uh, the limit as x approaches infinity of x to the n, um, if n is even, this goes towards positive infinity. If n is odd, it also goes towards positive infinity. And it really depends like if, if this c value is positive, it does that. If, the, if you have a c value out here that's negative, it flips all those. As it approaches negative infinity, if n's even, it still approaches infinity. But if n's odd, that's where we get that switch. It approaches negative infinity. All right, let's formalize this a little bit. I've been doing a lot of hand waving and looking at graphs. So how could we actually do some analysis? So there's my function. And I'm going to find the limit of this function as x approaches infinity. In other words, I'm going to get x, let x get really big. Now, one of the things that um, you may have learned in your um, previous math classes is really what's important as x gets big are these leading terms. So you might look at that and just see right away, oh, that, that's going to approach 3 halves. Because as x gets really large, the 5 and the 9 don't really matter as much. This will get closer and closer to 3x over 2x. X's cancel out 3 halves. Um, that being said, we could actually do a little more, uh, like I said, formalizing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, multiply both of these by 1 over x. And in other words, I wanna, I'm going to get this leading term to be like, had not have the variable in it. I'm going to try and rewrite this as uh, 3 plus 5 over x over 2 plus 9 over x. Now here's the advantage of, of writing this this way. I know that as x gets really big, anything that's divided by x, like just a constant divided by x, those will head towards 0. So I can think of this as the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 plus 5 over x over 2 plus 9 over x. This will run to 0. This will run to 0. My limit is 3 halves. I can make the same argument if I ran it towards um, negative infinity. Same sort of thing would happen. Let's do that with another problem. Um, how about the limit? I'll run this one to negative infinity. Of negative infinity. Let's make it a little more complicated. Uh, 3x squared plus 9x over 5x cubed, 8x. So notice like before I had, these, these were both the same degree, x to the first, x to the first. This was an x to the squared, and this one is an x cubed, x to the second, x cubed. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both of these by the largest one that, that I can. So by an x cubed. What I have here is 3 over x plus 9 over x squared. And here I have 5 plus 8 over x squared. 
So as x gets really large, my denominator tends towards 5 because that goes to 0. But notice up here, 3 over a negative number um, doesn't matter that it's negative because that's going to get so big that this goes to 0 and this goes to 0. So 0 divided by 5 is 0. So in this case, uh, this limit would be 0. This will have an asymptote at y equals 0. Now similarly, if I, if I run this limit, this has an x squared, so I'm going to multiply both sides by uh, both top and bottom by 1 over x squared. So this would be 6 plus 9 over x. This would be 3 over x plus 2 over x squared. Um, notice that if this gets really big, this starts to run towards 6, but this is a 0. It's undefined in that denominator. So that means that this doesn't have an asymptote, right? Like that limit, we could say that limit doesn't exist. Um, another way to think about this one is it, this is growing without bound, actually. If I try to divide by zero, like if I think about six divided by um, something really small, a half, that's 12 or six divided by a tenth, that's 60, or six divided by a hundredth, that's 600. As this approaches zero, this thing grows without bound. So this tells me it grows without bound. And in this case, um, hopefully if you remember from, um, from pre-calc, this is gonna be a slant asymptote, and you could find it by doing that division. So we have this function, and we are being asked to describe the end behavior of it. In other words, when we describe the end behavior, we're talking about uh, the behavior as x approaches infinity and the behavior as x approaches negative infinity, right? As it goes to the right and as it goes to the left. So let's do a little bit of analysis here. Um, since I have this square root of x squared like if i think about the square root of x squared that's um the absolute value of x it's a decent definition of it um right because x could be in here if x is five or negative five the answer is always going to be five so i this is a little technique i have to take into account because i'm going square root of that before i rewrite this so i'm going to find the limit of the function and in order to do that, um, like if this was just 3x and 4x, I would multiply both top and bottom by 1 over x. But since I have this square root of x squared, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 1 over the absolute value of x. Now, I just need to have this as a placeholder because if x is approaching positive infinity, x is positive. So that, that just means that now I know that like x is positive and I don't have to worry about this. So 3x minus 2 over 1 times 1 over x and square root of 4x squared plus 5 times 1 over x. And now what I can make this into is the square root of 1 over x squared. So then I can put it into that square root. So this would be 3 minus 2 over x over the square root of... 4 plus 5 over x squared. And notice, if I let that limit run to infinity, this is a 0, this is a 0. So I have 3 over the square root of 4, which is 3 halves. So the end behavior, the right-hand behavior, uh, the asymptote is at 3 halves. It approaches 3 halves. So as x approaches infinity, y approaches three halves and now if i do the left hand behavior that's this part so the limit as x approaches negative infinity of that same function so now i know that these would be negative values so i have uh, 3x minus 2 times negative 1 over x 
well, this part is still going to just be squared, right? Like negative x, but I'm going to square the whole thing. So when it gets shoved into there, it's still like it loses its negativeness. So this becomes, I distribute these into here, negative 3 plus 2 over x. And this is still the square root of uh, 4 plus 5 over x squared. Let x run to negative infinity. That becomes a 0. That becomes a 0. So we have negative 3 over root 4, which is negative 3 halves. So the left-hand behavior, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative 3 halves. So we have a different asymptote in the right-hand direction than in the left-hand direction. Another end behavior question. What is the end behavior of this function? Well, notice this has an e to the x in it, so it might be helpful if we know that e to the x looks like that. So uh, the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x is infinity, right? Because it's growing without bound, that upward. And the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x is zero. It has an asymptote, like it starts to settle down to zero. So we can use that to get at the end behavior of this. So the right-hand behavior is going to be the limit as x approaches infinity, right, as it grows to the right without bound. And for that one, uh, I know that this e to the x grows without bound, so I'm not sure what's going to happen here. So I'm going to do that same trick that I did with the polynomials. In other words, um, I'm going to re rewrite my f of x by multiplying both sides by 1 over e to the x. So uh, this becomes 2 over e to the x plus 3 over 7 over e to the x. And so now, notice if I let x grow without bound, this grows to infinity. So this becomes a 0. And this goes to infinity. This becomes a 0. So this would just be negative 3 fifths. Now let me do my other one, my limit as x approaches negative infinity as it goes to the left. Like that doesn't help me here. Like if I go, this becomes a 0. So I'm not sure what happens. But what I can do is I can look back to this form now the form that it came in, the original one. And I know that x approaches negative infinity, boop, 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 e to the x approaches 0. So this approaches 0, this is, approaches 0. So the left-hand behavior, it settles down to 2 sevenths. So as x approaches positive infinity, uh, the function approaches negative 3 fifths. But as x approaches negative infinity, the function approaches 2 sevenths. There's my left and right behavior on that little beast. All right, so now what I can do is I can throw together all of this uh, information that I know to, uh, to try and sketch graphs just by doing some analysis. So I know how to do end behavior. I know how to find max mins, and I know how to find concavity. Uh, so that should really actually be a big, a big help for me to, to get this. Oh, I can find zeros too, that's pretty easy. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So um, uh, the limit of this function as x approaches infinity. Let's see, if I multiply this out, like this squared is x squared minus 2x plus 1. Multiply that by x plus 2. That's x cubed. Those will drop out minus 3x plus 2. So as this approaches infinity, uh, x cubed is the one that really matters. That's the big one. That takes over. So this goes towards positive infinity. Um, as x approaches negative infinity, A negative number cubed is going to get bigger in a negative direction, so this tends towards negative infinity. Uh, let's see if we can find some max mins. 
So first derivative of this is 3x squared minus 3. Second derivative is 6x. So let's see, this equals 0 when, so at plus or minus 1. So plus and minus 1, those are my potential max mins. Um, and if I plug them in, the first derivative of negative 1 is negative, so that's concave down. The I'm sorry, second derivative. The second derivative at 1 is positive, so that's concave up. Man, so I have all this great information. Uh, let me find out where these, where these points are. f of 1, the actual point, 1 minus 3 plus 2 is at 0. That's negative 1 plus 3 plus 2 is at 4. And I also know that the derivative is 0 at 0. So there is my inflection point. So f of 0, boo boo boo, that happens at 2. So let me sketch what I know. Um, so I have a point at 1, 0. I have a point at 0, 2. I have a point at negative 1, 4. Now, um, at this point, negative 1, 4, the concavity is negative, and the slope is 0. So that means it's a, it's a local uh, maximum. At this point, uh, the concavity is positive, and the slope is 0. So this point is a local, uh, that's this point, sorry, at 1, 0, is a local minimum. This is an inflection point, so it changes from concave uh, down to concave up there. As x approaches infinity, it grows without bound. As x approaches negative infinity, it grows without bound. There's a sketch. And just from that, just from that little bit of analysis right there, I got some crucial points, um, inflection points, max mins, and I know the end behavior. All right, here is a, another function. Let's, uh, yeah, let's get a sketch of this graph. So let's do end behavior first. So the right-hand behavior, the limit as x approaches infinity. Well, I could multiply both of these by 1 over x squared just to be real official about what happens. This becomes 1 over um, 1 over x squared minus 1. And as x approaches infinity, this becomes a 0. So I have 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So this has a, uh, that's right-hand behavior. It has an asymptote at negative 1. Let me try it for negative infinity. Same thing, negative 1. So left-hand behavior is also negative 1. So it has an asymptote at negative 1. So here's what I know so far. There's an asymptote there. Okie doke. Let's look for max mins then and anything else. Um, well, actually, you know, one thing I also know is you can't divide by zero. And so that happens when x is 1 or negative 1. So I know I have asymptotes here and here as well. All right, again, let's look for max mins. So first derivative, it's going to be a quotient rule. So uh, derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times derivative of the bottom, bottom squared. Clean this up to... Oh, that's nice. So the, the numerator is just 2x over 1 minus x squared squared. So this equals 0 when x equals 0. And it's undefined at 1 and negative 1. But I've already dealt with those because I already know that those are, those are 
uh, vertical asymptotes. So and when x is 0, we want to know if that's a max or a min. So now I'm going to take second derivative and figure out if it's, if it's positive or negative or neither at that point. So second derivative is, let's see, derivative of the top times the denominator minus the numerator times derivative of the denominator, which is going to be a chain rule, 2 times 1 minus x squared, and then derivative of what's in there is a negative 2x. And that's over this denominator squared. Wow, that thing is a bloody mess. Uh, let's clean it up a little bit if we can. Oh, this is kind of nice. I see that they both have a 1 minus x squared in them. So I'm going to factor that out. times 2 times 1 minus x squared, right? Because this was squared. There's two of them there. So one of them gets left. Minus 2x times 2. That got factored out times negative 2x. And I'm just going to mess with the numerator right now. The denominator is not going to change at all. So this is 1 minus x squared. I'll leave that as it is. This is... Um, 2 minus 2x squared plus 4 8x squared, which is 1 minus x squared times 6x squared uh, plus 2. Notice that's 1 over 1 minus x squared to the fourth. So this one would cancel out one of these ones. So this is uh, 6x squared plus 2x over 1 minus x squared to the third power. But all that I want to know is, is this going to be positive or negative when I plug in a 0? And so uh, if I plug a 0 into this, that's a positive one. This will be 0. Uh, positive, sorry. So if it's positive, that means it's concave up. And so that means that this would be a min. Right, it has a, a slope of zero, but it's concave up. So that's the local minimum. Where does that happen at? I'm gonna plug the zero back into my original equation. Um, zero over one is zero. So at the point zero, zero, it's a minimum. And I know this is concave up, so this will look like this. Interesting. Uh, this is my asymptote here. And so I know that these will tuck right in here. And if I didn't, I could grab some points, right? Like I could plug in two or three or four and just kind of get a frame for this. But there's my sketch right there. All right. Hey, uh, give these a try. They're, the sketching pulls together a lot of information, right? How do we find max mins? How do we find concavity? How do we define end behavior? Um, but you are up for it. Post questions in the forum, message me with them, and good luck with this.